What's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of What Are They Cooking? The series where we showcase the craziest Edison format replays that you, the audience, have sent in to the channel. As always, if you're a member of the audience and you've got a cool replay, uh, you can go to the Discord link in the description and post it in the Edison format replays channel. Starting off today, we have Plant Dragons versus, uh, I think, Christia Sworn, I think. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool one here. Um, Plant Dragons is like a, it's like a really old, almost, I think, weird idea before Dragon Turbo really hit the scene. People were experimenting with all kinds of weird stuff. Um, but yeah, they're basically playing like Debris and Dandy. It's almost like, um, it's almost like the, the sort of modern Dragon builds that aren't Turbo. But, and I'm a little bit heavier with like, I think they're playing Titanials and, uh, and Lone Fires. Here we're going to drop Christia, which is looking pretty good. We add back an Orange Light. We're definitely on more Fairy stuff here than uh, than most Christia Sworn builds are. Run Enrise and Dim Alk, uh, and Souls of Purity and Light on top of all that. So potentially playing some kind of like dimensional <laughs> Christia Sworn, I guess? Is that, what, is that how we would call it? That kind of makes sense. We're getting stormed here. We're going to go ahead and chain the call, which doesn't do anything. All right. <laughs> Opponent's going to set two back row. We draw back into the Christia, which is live. It is live. So we're just going to go try to take out one of the back row with this Lila. Uh, we're going to eat a Torrential, which is not great. We're going to summon the other Christia, or re-summon re the Christia, rather. And the set is just a Starlight Road, which is absolutely worthless in this situation. Opponent's going to set Raikou. The Raikou will take out the... Christia. Yeah, we have all kinds of banish outlets actually. We have Chaos, we have Enrise, we have Dimalk, we have Soul of Purity. We're like definitely playing Return from the Different Dimension in here, right? That's that's a pretty cool build. Alright, we're gonna go for Foolish just to send to get back the Red Med, which uh, the Red Med is getting sorked, so into Oblivion, unfortunately. The set cards are just Brain Control and Starlight Road. We can take the Sork, we can use it to banish... Uh, we're just gonna banish himself, alright? And we're going to... Deprison one of these, I guess. Would deprison the Dimalk. What do we draw into? A Wyvern? That's not going to do it, but it does wall. Uh, they, and then they draw into a Raikou, which is a decent draw. We're going to bring down the Enrise, banish that Tribute Summon for the Christia. The Christia not going to get taken out, however, because they have to pop the Nova Summoner to live. However, if they had popped the Christia, they'd have gotten Dandy Tokens, so a little bit of a dang. If only, if only they had gone for it and popped the Christia, but, you know, you can't really gamble on that, so... I mean, now that we look at it, this really does look like a lot of dragon builds, but just with dandelion stuff. Uh, instead of playing, I don't know, just Spear Reaper, Card Trooper, Raikou is the only debris targets. Um, this Christia build, though, definitely very cool with all the banishing stuff and maybe probably not playing JD. It's more like a, it's more like Chaos Fairy Sworn, actually, if you really, if you really think about it. So we're going to get shooted here, which is not great. The opponent could have gone Iron Chain Dragon here, but they just didn't, um, which I... I don't know. <laughs> I feel like maybe they should have. We're going to hit into a hamster, which we I, I think we didn't banish for Dim Elk that turn, so we were supposed to take damage, which fortunately the opponent does catch. They're going to Raikou our Dim Elk. They're going to summon Debris in, into Stardust, just getting no value out of the Debris. And now we just hit into a Recruiter. We activate Storm, set Bottomless Pass. Uh, the Honest will get bounced. That's probably going to eat a Bottomless. Bottomless not even very good in this matchup, if I'm going to be real. They're going to run over our hamster, and now there's still an Honest to contend with. Fortunately, they can threaten it with this um, this Red-Eyes Wyvern. We're going to add back the Aaron, though. So we can still... We're just chilling. We activate Charge, get the Raikou. So, I mean, the cool thing about this is you get the setup for, like, Enrise and Sork really fast, right? Again, we're just using Honest to wall, so we're going to stay alive. Um, not that we're in tremendous danger of dying, I guess. Well, maybe... <laughs> We're going to summon out the Orange Light. How many fairies? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, like, Christia's super dead unless we draw an Enrise. Uh, we're just going to pitch it for Brionic. Um, we could have gone Goyo Steal the Stardust, right? That was just, like, a regular Stardust. All right, well, they go Iron Chain. That's going to mill three cards. We draw and do Solar Recharge. Dead draw. Not very good. Opponent's going to set a D-Prison. We will Typhoon. We draw and do an Angel. I mean, that could keep us alive, but they just have Dinah, so if they summon Dinah, I think it's looking pretty pretty over for us, unfortunately. They'll run straight over that recruiter. They actually don't, though, so we're going to get to float into something. We float into Orange Light, which is kind of 
we're just like hoping we t we top deck and we do we go into armory arm and we attack for game with the end rise powered up by the armor that was a crazy finish there all right this is a pretty based build i like it it's 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 like it's like a light sworn chaos fairy basically um yeah I'm, I'm a fan of it next up we've got uh what is this one this one is like diamond dude diva hero which is it's just like a little bit of a wonky diva hero build i don't know how to describe it they got like fiendish chains and they have like an emergency teleport it's like it's like teledad almost <laughs> it's like diva teledad basically um so the opponent yeah diva diva teledad it's like they combine diva hero and and teledad so we're gonna typhoon this back row attack our opponent is going to Garda to protect their Lumina, and we're just going to continue with the gaining 600. Opponent goes summon out the Lila, target the Fiendish Chain, which is going to allow the Lumina to go off pitch. And now we got we got Lumina Garoth plus Lila, so some plussing presumably going to be happening uh, in the opponent's end phase. They're also playing Christia Sworn, but more of a traditional Christia Sworn build with the JDs and the uh, more extensive Light Sworn lineup. So we're going to attack... We hit over the Lumina after our opponent bluffs Honest. Very funny. Uh, they're going to Lila our other back row, which is apparently not chainable for any value. All we have is a Diva and Gilman. They stack for Plague, Synchro, and Goyo. Steal our guy. We could drop Trag here, maybe. We should have dropped... No, we, we should drop it here. My bad. The Garoth would have run it over. That's We don't want that, because we can pitch Mali, steal Goyo, which is an insanely good play. Um... That I, we, we had like weirdly shark our opponent trying to set a back row here i don't <laughs> whatever it's not it's not like it's gonna matter i mean we we just steal their guy we have Devo. we have like infinite synchro plays we go into stardust we run over everything i mean we have we we steal their guy we have miracle fusion it's like impossible for them to win i mean maybe could they have beckoning like jd won the game i i don't know they probably still... No, because they just have to win that turn or they would mill themselves out. I just... I don't see them winning that um, whatsoever. So we're going to swing into the set monster. Unfortunately for us, it is the hamster. Uh, but we got the plague spreader out, so we could stack a, nor <clears throat> stack a normal spell for diamond dude, which could be funny. Opponent going to swing in and then attack. We draw into a diva. So yeah, we are going to... We're going to do the aforementioned play, which is going to allow us to have a sort of sort of free miracle but it's like we stacked it i don't know <laughs> all right opponent's gonna flip up that raikou take out the uh the goyo and they're swinging in for some damage what's the status of dark arm we should prio typhoon which we do we're smart good go for diva go for gilman synchro use that miracle fusion to get out an absolute zero unfortunately the dark arm is getting ever more distant from being live we get honested but that's going to take out their whole field now we attack, we set Starlight Road. If they JD us, that'll be pretty good. Um, which, I don't know, is there a JD down there? There is. So this this Starlight Road could potentially be going pretty hard here. And the Beckoning Light is coming down. They go for Soul of Purity, Honest, and Judgment Dragon, which is, I think, live. Yeah, they go straight for the Judgment Dragon. There's Starlight Road, though. That's awesome for us. And the opponent admits defeat. They didn't know they were dead, but, I mean, they were dead. They were dead, though, right? So, yeah. Okay, moving on to the next game. We've got Norlorus versus Zeta Reticulant. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool matchup here. We're going for Allure. We're going for Greffer. We set up our graveyard a bit. We got that Norlorus ready to go for next turn. The opponent knows the Norlorus is ready to go, so they decide to get some of their setup. They got a Plague and a Zeta down there now, and a Necro Gardener as well. So not even going to get that much value if we happen to Norlorus at this point. Probably better off just summoning the Card Trooper. Which is what we're going to do. Take out the Dark Greffer and pass. The opponent draws. They summon that DD Warrior Lady. They're not going to Warrior Lady our guy, which... I don't know. They'd have gotten a token. For, it would have been a plus one. So we get Trunated now. Now we're going for Phantom Norlers. Okay, do we have a Vayu down there? It would be pretty good if we did, but we unfortunately do not. We get to draw one at least. We draw into Gores, which is a pretty insanely... We draw into Gores and Creator. We're actually just cooking so hard. What the hell? All right, Necro Gardener comes down. The opponent, they, they have to go for stack for Plague into Ryza. No, they're going to go for Caius. Uh, they have to go Caius because the Necro Gardener is down there. And they get a token too, which is nice, I guess. Is the Necro Gardener getting used? It is. We summon Elfin. All right, nice draw. The Sirocco can now pump to get over. No, we're just going to get rid of everything. They're drawing into a dead card, and I think this is the end of the game for the poor Zeta Reticulant player. <laughs> 
uh you phantom and then just draw gores and then draw creator which is even better than gores feels bad feels bad so we're going for turn one dad it looks like which um is funny we can use the doomsday horror pop our own doomsday horror put back all the banished cards summon another vayu synchro pop the opponent's monster and then just like straight otk with doomsday horror that was awesome <laughs> doomsday horror is so based man oh more people gotta play this card yeah uh for those you don't know it, it gains some stats which is basically irrelevant the reason you play it is because when it dies it returns all banished dart it's like a super barrel from the different dimension for um for Vayu, so a very funny card there. Final replay we have Emerilis Gigavice versus Machinas. So we're going to go ahead and summon the Lila. Gets compulsed back. Makes sense. Opponent's going to pitch Special Fortress. Getting very aggressive. Why is everyone playing this Gravekeeper build? I think it... I know it topped something. What did it top? There was a Gravekeeper build that topped... Was, it was not Indianapolis, though. It was something else, I think. Maybe it was Indianapolis, and I'm stupid, but I don't think it was... We're going to go trade in, set, set. This morphing jar, about to go hard. The opponent actually plays around it, which is kind of funny. <laughs> they knew. Did they know about it? We didn't get dust shoot or anything, did we? No, they just, they had a sense. They had a sense. They had a feeling. We're going to storm. Starlight Road comes down. We go for charge of the light brigade. Add Lila. So we're just going to, what, brain control? That's such a good brain control, actually. Very godly. Going to eat a D prison there. Now we just summon lone fire. Get, get cooking here. Go into a titanial. And then bring down the Amaryllises. And now we feel in such a good spot. We got DDR ready to go for next turn. We're going to try to swing over that Stardust. Opponent doesn't compulse. They could have compulsed our guy. And then like Stardust negated our Titanium negate. Which I get that's not a fantastic trade. Because you're still losing your Compulse and your Stardust. But I mean at least you're getting rid of the, the Titanium. Uh, so we go DDR here. Go for Lone Fire. Going to get another... <laughs> No, we get the Giga Plant. All right, here's where we're going funny. Uh, the opponent tries to compulse. We just negate. They bring out Fortress, hit over. I mean, this is over, right? We almost die, I guess, but now it, it's just things are happening. You know, we go Stardust. We hit over. We can, what, hit the set monster? We should probably deal with the set monster first, but I don't know. We have enough negates to negate everything. Does it really matter? Um, I think that's the last attack we have, but now... You know, Stardust comes back, and two Amaryllises come back. How are we possibly winning <laughs> Typhoon? We just let it go, because our, uh, our set is just a worthless dust shoot. So, yeah, we went crazy there at the end, though. Uh, we open up the Giga Plant, which you don't really want to do. We go Foolish for Amaryllis. It's going to come back. This is looking bad, though. They c our, our hand is pretty weak, and they have Dinah and stuff. The side changes. Oh, dude, I played against... I think I played against this exact build. They must just be net decking because um, I played against a build of Machina that was on like the Gravekeeper stuff and the Chain Disappearance, so I guess that must have been in the side. It's just a weird card to be siding, I guess. Um, but for some reason, they don't bring down the Dyna, so now we're just in the game. I <laughs> and we used our Crow in an extremely wonky fashion there. It's like we used it on the Summon a Fortress to try and prevent them from summoning another Fortress. But, like, we had Gores anyway, so I don't know why we did that. In general, I don't really think it's worth it to bring in Crow against these Machina decks. It's basically only good for Pot of Avarice. Um, but, yeah, now we just have such an established field. The Dyna, though, is going to wipe it out. Not anymore, though. We brought down a Titanial, so this one will stay. And their own Fortress is going to die. And they take 800 from the from the, uh, the Amaryllis anyway. And we're just going to bring back the Amaryllis and pass, and now we're in a good spot. I mean, this matchup is, like, really... Yeah, I think I played this in the... Was it in the um, episode... The latest episode of Climbing the Ladder is when I played against, like, this exact deck. And we noted in that episode just how, like, really good Amaryllis is into this matchup. The opponent just tries to judgment a monster effect, which doesn't work because it's not Solemn Strike. And, yeah, Titanial just negates, like, this whole deck. It's kind of unfair. Um, and we see that the Amaryllis player is going to win. I Presumably they have a Super Vice that they can search off Hidden Armory, by the way, but we never got to see that. We did get to see some Giga Plant shenanigans in game, in game one, I guess, though. So that's the final replay we have. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought in the comments section. I'll see you next time. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Furthermore, if you enjoy my content, you should think about becoming a channel member. You get access to tons of bonus content, and it's a great way to help support the channel.